and welcome into Board Check. Great to be back this week. I'm Jeremy the Impact York. We are repping Team Boston today. This is actually a fantastic jersey. I'm actually that guy there, but uh, repping the team colors for the Boston Bruins who have been doing fantastic. We're going to get into them and the LA Kings a little later, but right here in period number one, we're going to start right now with the ECHL action of the Manchester Monarchs. Now, of course, last Friday, actually last Friday and Saturday, they were at home against the Elmira Jackals. On Friday, they got the big win, 5-1. Five to one. 5 is more than 1. Nope, 1-3-3. It's 5-1. Magic trick there, fellas. Uh, where Bukarts, Lavalle, Smotherman, Leitner, Ciampini, and Doremus all had goals. And, of course, Mr. Pertain had 26 saves. And, of course, on Saturday, they also picked up the victory. That time it was 4 to 2. Isn't that weird? It's still no matter how many times you do it. It's six goals total. The good thing is we're on the good side of that one. We're on the plus side. 4 to 2. Ciampini, Lavalle, Smotherman. Imagine that. I'm going to start calling him JLS. It's so much easier. Jordan Lavalle, Smotherman. JLS with the one. Morris and Privatera got one as well. And Mr. Imu, Mr. Emu, I'm going to call him Emu. Mr. Emu uh, ended up with the victory on that one, which is good. Getting that kid back on track is only going to make us better. Upcoming schedule for the Manchester Monarchs, for our Manchester Monarchs. All the way up there in New Hampshire. In fact, a lot of these guys here are now pros that came from there. They're worth checking out, definitely. If, you did, if you're up in the greater New Hampshire area or if they're coming to an ECHL city near you, definitely go check them out. They're worth a watch. Upcoming schedule this Tuesday, actually, as we are as we're recording this right now, they are in Wheeling against the Nailers. That is a 7.05 start. Once again, started just a handful of minutes ago. Tomorrow night, Wednesday, they will be in Reading against the Royals. That is a 7 p.m. start. And then this upcoming Friday, they have a game in Elmira with the Jackals. That is a 7.05 Eastern Standard Time start. The Holiday Classic, they or they are actually a Holiday Classic presenting sponsor, which is the high school tournament from December 26th through the 29th at the JFK Arena. I think that's really cool that they are sponsoring the event. And if you guys get a chance, go check out some local high school action, the 26th, the 27th, 28th, and the 29th. One of those days is really, really, really special. At least as far as I'm concerned. We'll let you guys guess as far as that and why. But, yeah, if you get a chance to check out the Holiday Classic, definitely do that. There will be a lot of Manchester Monarchs around. There will be a lot of Monarch stuff uh, on the walls, a lot of – just a lot of overall fun things going on. So definitely go check that out. Now, let's move on to our other ECHL affiliate. That, of course, would be the Atlanta Gladiators. Now, the Atlanta Gladiators had a game Tuesday in Greenville against the Swamp Rabbits. God, they played Greenville so many times. But, once again, one of the other cool cool uh, teams and team logos and such. But... The Swamp Rabbits got the best of the Gladiators. They lost 5-2. to two. Buzio and Neely with the goals in that one. Now, on Friday, we were in Florida against the Everblades. We were also there Saturday. On Friday, the overtime loss 8-7, to seven, where Howman, Neely, Neely actually had two, Backer had two, Cameron had one, and Hicks had one in the losing effort. On Saturday, we get the 3-2 to two victory, which is good. After losing five to two and eight to seven, it's good to know we were still scoring goals. We get the win on Saturday in Florida against those Everblades, three to two, where Neely netted two and oh, Captain, my Captain. See how many times I can salute this time? Oh, Captain, my Captain. Derek Nesbitt popped in the other. Uh, Patterson ended up getting the save with, or he ended up getting. Let's try this again. Patterson gets the win with 41 saves. See, I'm so tongue tied. I was just so it's so. Just spectacular what happened. Uh, I would say by far Neely is absolutely on fire, to use an old NBA jam, Sega Genesis term. In the last week, just in the last three games, he has five total goals. Uh, let's get Neely the puck, you know. Let's try to do that, right? Upcoming, they only have the game this coming up Friday at home 
against the Greenville Swamp Rabbits. Imagine that. The Rabbits are in town. It might be rabbit season. Let's get let's get a win on the board. 7.35 Eastern Standard Time start on that one. And we'll be right back. It's end of period number one. We'll be back after the first intermission with period number two of board check. We're going to talk a little NHL action. Back here for period number two. two. Okay, you saw that there. Period number two of board check. I'm Jeremy the Impact York. We're getting some NHL uh, topics right now. Uh, wish we had a little more time, but you know, it is what it is. There are some other things we're going to get into here soon, and we'll talk a little more about that in period number three. But for now, let's start with. The Edmonton Oilers winger uh, Patrick Maroon recently scored a goal. Now, that's not necessarily the big part of the story. The big part is is when he saw his son's reaction, who was in the stands when he scored the goal, uh, made him tear up a little bit. And that's when you realize that it's about more than just playing the game and that hockey, at least to me, is one of the purest sports and one of the coolest things you can, you can take a, a, a small child to. I'm, uh, I'm hoping here here soon to be able to take um, maybe a nephew or so to some hockey games, and I think they're going to enjoy it. They they watch with me at, uh, when they're in town, so you know, just trying to do my part because hockey really is it's it's a family game to me. And if you can get your family out to watch games, you definitely should. But you know, shout out to you, Patrick Maroon, um, for not only showing that you're an emotional great player but that you're bringing your son up right you took him or you made sure he was at a game and you're doing something right moving on bob hartley here in atlanta we like bob hartley at least most of us do but bob hartley he's got a new coaching gig obviously he's not uh, in the nhl anymore when the flames let him go it, I, I knew it was bad luck when he went with a team that used to be in the city where another team he coached was. And that was, you know, he was with the Thrashers. He's been with a handful of other people. But he went to the Flames, did pretty well, got him to the playoffs, and then they came back down to earth this year. But he is going to coach Team Latvia in the upcoming World Juniors. And to me, that makes – and he's, it's the contract is through for the next calendar year and has the option for 2018 as well. They'll probably pick this up. Bob Hartley is a great, great – hockey mind and i wish him all the best and uh, i hope team latvia does really well except for when they play against team usa but that's a whole different debate but uh shout out to you bob hartley we haven't forgot all the stuff you did here in atlanta and we wish you the best third thing we want to get to here uh the carolina versus detroit game that was uh just uh last night or a couple nights ago i forgot the exact I think it was last night. But, you know, Gladiators play-by-play man in the booth there. Uh, Chris Treff was at the game, or at least he showed up for the game. And the story here is that this game was postponed because they didn't have time to make it up because of Detroit's schedule, but it's postponed because of a blown hose that disallowed the floor and the ice to actually freeze to a safe level. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to play ice hockey without ice, right? I mean, I understand things happen, hurricanes, but come on. it's This happens more times than people realize. And I'm sure your crew does a, a really good job, but you, you just, you got to do better than this. We can't have games being postponed because it's going to screw up the whole schedule. It screws up a lot of other stuff. Um, it could cause injuries to the players. I know playing on this ice could have done the same, or playing on this water, rather. But come on, Hurricanes. There was a rumor a couple of weeks ago that I talked about that you guys could be on the selling block as a franchise. Now you can't keep your ice frozen. I mean, what else is going to happen? It's you, you, I don't think you're a, fa uh, a failing franchise. I thought you were a pretty good franchise. But you can't keep having these kind of crazy things happen. 
or they may move on from you. But they'll get this back together. They'll figure this out exactly when they're going to play again and all. And all I can say about that is go Red Wings. It is what it is, Carolina. Last thing I want to talk to talk about is uh, something that was uh, pretty cool to me, but uh, only because I, re I really enjoy this guy. And that's John Tortorella, who's coached the Rangers. He's coached uh, across the league, but he is currently, I believe, with Columbus. And he got win number 500 as a coach just uh, earlier this week, or actually last week, I believe. Now, what does this mean exactly? Well, this is exactly what this means is that he is the first U.S. born coach to get 500 wins. So congratulations, John Tortorella. I always enjoy, I enjoy your press conferences I, probably more than I do your coaching, but you're a fantastic coach. I'm glad you're still coaching in the league, and congratulations on 500. But that's going to do it for period number two. Jer the, Jeremy the Impact York, after the second intermission, we're going to come back for period number three where we're going to talk about the Boston Bruins and the L.A. Kings and who won that face-off and if that means anything. And also have a Pasternak update for you Bruins fans. We'll be right back after this on board show. for period number three right here on board check Jeremy and Pat York returning hope you guys had a great intermission you know we got into some pretty cool issues uh, you know one day we're just going to sit down and round table discuss this we'll have some of the other guests that have been on the show before and we'll round table discuss some of the bigger issues there's so much fun things we really want to get into but for now we just want to hit some of the bigger things going on some of the bigger topics and we hope you guys enjoy obviously if you have suggestions questions comments send them to us at board check on Twitter, we will definitely uh, look at those. And, and if you send us a cool story, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, whatever, send us a cool story, tell us something you want us to discuss, and we will do our best to address it here. Or maybe even do one of those roundtables, like I said. But period number three means we are talking about the NHL, and we're going to start with the Boston Bruins, where last Wednesday they were in Pittsburgh, ended up losing that one in overtime 4-3. to Krejci, Marshawn, and... Pasternak ended up with the goals. I'll have an update on Mr. Pasternak here in a minute. On Thursday, they were at home against the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Not so much mighty about them, but they ended up getting the victory here over the Boston Bruins 4-3, where Krejci, Chara, and Zarnik were the goal scorers. And then this Sunday, this past Sunday, they were against the LA Kings. Yep, the other team we cover right here, the L.A. Kings and the Boston Bruins faced. This was a fantastic game. Especially if you're a Boston Bruins fan, because with the 1-2-0 shutout victory, Tuka Rask, with his 18 saves, ended up with a victory there, and Hayes with the lone goal. This game was fantastic. It is what you would call a, a pitcher's duel in baseball. This was the hockey equivalent. This was two teams that just beat the crap out of each other. Finally, somebody scored. Fantastic game. The NHL is full of them like this. You can catch any kind of NHL, AHL, ECHL. If there's a local Pee Wee team, if there's college, if there's high school, whatever, if there's a local hockey game, make sure to check it out. You know, I got a lot of family coming into town here in the next week or so. Maybe, uh, maybe we find our way out to the Infinite Energy Center out in Duluth and check out some Gladiators games. I'm going to try to do my best to get them out there. Maybe you guys try to do your best to get them out there for uh, some live hockey action. Now, I told you I was going to give you a Pasternak update. He had a elbow procedure, basically. It's your elbow. You know that. It's called like a bursa sac or something like that. It's where uh, you suffer injury to this part of your elbow, and uh, it kind of fills up with some some uh, liquid, so to say. I'm trying to get too graphic here, but it kind of, and you usually have to get it drained or you can go in there and get it fixed. He decided to go in there and get it fixed. I think that is the best option going forward. 
he is one of the hottest players out right now. So it's, it's, you know, go ahead and take a little bit of time off. He's still on pace, I think for 30 plus goals and I'm okay with that number, but I hope he'll be back here soon. But with that roster spot open, who in the world, let's see, who could they call up? Gosh, how about Frank the Tank Vetrano? He is a uh, super strong, super young, super fantastic scorer. Just a pure scorer. They have called back up. He's finally healthy. You know, he got hurt. This is the second year in the league. They called up Frank Vetrano, and he's going to take Pasternak's spot for now. When Pasternak comes back, obviously, they'll figure it out from there. But having Frank the Tank back up means more Boston Bruins goals, more things I get to talk about, and more of this youth movement. It's been pretty good for the Bruins so far. If we can uh, maybe get some outside help or maybe some inside help to the blue line, uh, sky's the limit on this. And also, if we can get a backup goaltender who can win a game and give Tuca a night off, that would be fantastic. But let's move from Boston to L.A. I guess L.A. on this way. This camera always messes me up. But if you're in Boston, L.A.'s that way. Let's move on to the L.A. Kings. Uh, I already told you about their Sunday game. They lost one to nothing to the Boston Bruins. Great, fantastic game. Uh, the Thursday before that, they were in Detroit where they won 4-1, to one, where Zach, or let's see, Zach Hoff ended up with 17 saves and the victory. Foley netted two. Dowd had one. And uh, I believe Forbear, Forbert had the other one. On Friday, they were in Pittsburgh. They won one to nothing with the shutout. Remember, anytime the Penguins lose, that's a good day, at least here on Voracek. They beat Pittsburgh one to nothing. And Tapoli with the lone goal. That guy's heating up once again. You know what? I think, let's turn around real quick. Uh, we do not have the Tafoli poster up yet, but very soon we will have that up. Redoing some things here. Obviously, it's the holiday time. There's all kinds of fun things going on here. So we haven't gotten that up yet, but you know what? To have two victories and, and a loss out of three games, I'm happy with it. I know you guys are happy with it. Right now, Boston is a stronger team over the Kings as far as the two that we talk about weekly. But I like both of the chances right now. Boston surging and holding strong. L.A. starting to move up. They found a way. They're riding that into the beach. This, this latest wave here, it's going to be fantastic. Upcoming for your L.A. Kings tonight as of – Right now, when we're talking, they're in Columbus against the Blue Jackets. That's a 4 p.m. Pacific time start. And yes, I realize we have not talked about Boston's upcoming schedule. I will talk about it in a minute. But uh, like I said, as of right now, they're talk they're against Columbus against the Blue Jackets. That is a 7, 7 p.m. Eastern time start, 4 p.m. out in Pacific land. Uh, 5 p.m. on Thursday in Nashville against the Predators. Uh, the Predators are fantastic right now so it's gonna that's gonna be a pretty tight battle and then on friday they're in dallas to take on the stars that is a 5 30 pacific time start moving back to boston upcoming schedule for them this tuesday as we're talking right now they're at home against the new york islanders 7 p.m eastern time start at 7 10 on thursday they will be against the florida panthers in florida and on friday they will be going to carolina if their ice is frozen Sorry, it is what it is. Hurricanes, you know, it is what it is. Things happen, but it is what it is. That is a 7.30 start when they're in Carolina. And that's going to do it for us this week. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Jeremy the Impact York. This has been Board Check. We'll see you guys next week. Go Kings. Go Bruins. Go Gladiators. Go Monarchs. And go watch hockey.